Well, good morning, everybody. This is uh, Matt Hine here from Navient, and we're going to get the uh, the webinar kicked off here very quickly. I know we've got a half hour to talk today, so we're going to try to condense as much information as we can within that half hour um, and talk to you about the five best practices for uh, HR compliance. So again, I'm Matt Hine, a Strategic Account Executive with Navient, and alongside me today is Ed Majeska, who is our Vice President of Government and Strategic Accounts. We appreciate your time. And uh, we're going to jump right in here right away. So we've got a, uh, a short agenda. Um, uh, we're going to talk about the five best practices, obviously. We're going to then give you some tools and resources to get started um, um, in your quest for HR compliance and uh, creating efficiency within that department. And then we're going to give you some takeaways and some final thoughts. So like I said, really brief agenda. Going on today, we probably have a couple hours worth of material that we've condensed down. We're on the... Uh, the uh, NCA bracket slimming things down, so we're trying to get this uh, condensed as much as we can. So, as we were putting this together, we thought, you know, to ourselves, what do we, what do we focus on? What areas um, are we gonna, are we gonna look at? Do we focus on software? Talk about on base specifically? Do we branch out even a little bit farther and go into workflow automation, or uh, do we look at case studies of our current customers? Because we've definitely seen an uptick as far as our customer base in the last nine to twelve months, and as far as HR projects that are going on. So um, instead of doing that, we actually took a step back and decided what keeps HR directors, uh, managers up at night. What's the one thing that really, you know, keeps them thinking and and uh, and, and puts thoughts, you know, as far as how can they improve their current department. If it wasn't for compliance, um, there wouldn't be any need for new capabilities or automations. We'd just go through with our standard, you know, folders that we've got and paper manual processes. But um, that's not the case. So instead, we decided to focus on the core compliance reasons um, and some best practices that occur. So number one, disaster preparedness. Um, when I first thought of this one, I, a thought that came to mind was was fire, but actually floods um, have increased, you know, throughout the country, um, not necessarily here in Wisconsin locally, but uh, this is an example of a customer that, that we've worked with in the past that has had some experience with flooding um, in one of their buildings, typically files and specifically HR files in this case were actually stored in the basement. They had some flooding that had occurred, luckily for them. Uh, they had switched over to OnBase, so they had their information stored on a server at a, at a different location and then backed up actually at a separate location. So um, just an example of that type of disaster. And really, what are we looking to eliminate? We're looking to eliminate paper storage. So we're looking to mitigate some of that risk that, that occurs with paper files and documents, um, uh, put that into an electronic content, and then be able to access that. And, be, and with that, and with any disaster, comes the ability to uh, not only prevent that data loss, but be able to get the uh, increase your downtime. So once, you, once you've got a disaster or an issue that happens, getting people back up and running as quickly as possible is really kind of the driving force behind that. Um, kind of number two and, and where we're going next with this is audit preparedness. So uh, not necessarily a, a physical disaster, but we've all experienced an auditor coming into our locations um, or into our industries. And really three things. So how do we prepare for that audit? What do we do in the face of an audit? And then best practices for audit compliance is where we're going to go next. Uh, preparation is key, just like any job interview or any presentation that you're going to do, getting uh, the correct information and, uh, and uh, content uh, to that auditor when they show up on day one um, obviously sets, your, sets the stage for a very good process um, and the ability to do that. Search capabilities, we're going to talk a little bit about that and be able to use uh, a tool such as OnBase to do that, report on missing documents. And then ultimately giving the auditor only the information that exactly for what they're asking. So not giving them too much information, but in the process, you know, keeping the integrity of those documents, being able to track the history along with any workflow history that's assigned to those documents. So that's part of the preparedness um, stage. As a uh, HR director, typically the ones that I know tend to get into the office early in the morning. You go get your cup of coffee, you come and open your email, and first thing that you see is the dreaded audit email. I'm going to give you a second just to read that. And within that email, we're looking for our auditor is going to be looking for I-9s and W forms along with all job requisitions and uh, equal employment opportunity surveys. So at that point in time, if we're in the HR department, what do we do? 
we freak out and run around. We might run down to the president of the company. We might run to our other staff. We might go and start pulling I-9s from a physical uh, folder or an off-site location as far as documents go and, and searching for that stuff. And we're proposing that you don't do that. So instead, um, ability to find some of these missing documents and, and one of the tools that exists within OnBase um, is something called exception reports. So in this case, uh, we could pour, pull a report that identifies missing document types, for example, I-9s. Um, you can also find a group of document types, uh, for instance, new hire paperwork, um, other forms that you can find. So within these reports, you've got the list of documents or the list of uh, forms that are missing. Uh, within that, then we need the ability to go with uh, search capabilities or to drill down into the actual documents themselves. So not necessarily just one document at a time, but to be able to pull in, in this case, um, and do a custom query, be able to research any type of uh, employee numbers, and then find that specific I-9. We'll see that a little bit later, too, when we start talking about auditors being on site and some of the capabilities that exist within OnBase to be able to drill down and find this information. Um, along with that comes the ability to do real-time reporting. And, um, and with that, the integrations that come with, a, uh, um, with email or with Microsoft uh, Word, uh, for example, if you've got an auditor in your office, you've got the ability within OnBase to, to not only integrate to Outlook, but to be able to route information to them quickly um, and in a timely manner, but also be able to use Microsoft Word, um, ex export information directly to Excel, and then be able to manipulate that data uh, for whatever means that, that you're requiring at that point in time. So there's some of the capabilities that exist um, within OnBase today. When you've got an auditor in, there's going to be more than likely a chance once you get all their information, they're going to be looking for additional information, obviously digging in a little bit further. Um, within OnBase, you've got the ability to not only create a folder, but limit the access of that auditor specifically to the documents and forms uh, that they're looking for. Abilities exist uh, or capabilities exist to be able to just drag and drop that information from your standpoint as, a, as an HR director or HR manager and, uh, and then that auditor's ability to, to research and find the information that they're looking for as supplied to them. Um, as we're talking about um, uh, percentages, you know, of, of employees, I guess related to basketball, you know, a 90% free throw shooter is a, uh, is a great free throw shooter. That's not going to cut it within the HR world. We're looking at 100% accuracy to remind compliant. And with that, and if we're not compliant, obviously we're going to be in the, in, uh, exposed to fines, um, and which is we're trying to, trying to avoid. We're trying not to be a cost center at this point in time. Uh, but limit that secure access is kind of the driving point in that, in that last slide, and, and, that's, and that's where we're at today. So why does that matter? And kind of a subset of this is uh, our, our number three as, as of today, or I-9 compliance. So um, we've seen that on the rise. I'll show you on the next slide here with uh, the audits for I-9s have, have dramatically increased from 2004. Um, employee audits by the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, the USCIS, continue to be on the rise. As you can see from the graphic in front of you, really three audits in 2004 up to 3,000 plus in 2012 um, is a huge percentage increase uh, from that standpoint. So some of the guidelines that the USCIS um, has given us is indexing. So don't just take your folder of information from an HR standpoint and just dump that into OnBase or into a central repository. Being able to index that information correctly um, is very key at this point in time and which will create an audit trail uh, for those documents. So the minute that document is audited or is uh, ingested into OnBase, there is a history or a tracking mechanism to be able to follow that document and then be, be able to follow any workflow actions. So from an auditor standpoint, they can see uh, the entire uh, document lifecycle and then ultimately be able to, to have controls over that document. So any type of audit or recommendations that you're going to get, there's going to be controls that are typically implemented. Um, this is a very, a very key component to be able to do that. So. Um, as we talk about I-9 compliance and really on base or an enterprise content management or ECM system, uh, reporting is key. We showed you a little bit of that before with exception reportings. Really, uh, there's, a, there's a variety of reports that are available out there to be able to, 
to research things and drill down as far as you need to. Purge information, so if you've got somebody that is retired or has been terminated uh, from the company, uh, that are, therein lies retention policies and the ability to remove that information from the system as needed. And then self-service access, we showed that a little bit with the drag and drop of the folders, but giving the auditors actual access directly um, to the documents that they require. So I'm gonna turn it over now. Ed's gonna talk a little bit about security. We go from there. Thank you, Matt. Good morning, everyone. Um, number four, what keeps HR up at night? Security is definitely it. Security, confidentiality is a genuine concern. In fact, it's probably the number one topic we get questions on initially with new meetings with new HR departments. Um, in fact, the first question that we normally address is what can your HR staff see? Um, kind of starting there as, as kind of that baseline. You know, um, you know what, what documents do you have? What document types? How are they arranged? You know, what folders? Do you, have a, do you have a special red folder with I-9s that only certain people in the department can see? Um, how do people search for it? Do you have notes um, that you're putting on things? And in the, in the manual world, it's hard to keep those secure. But if, as you think forward into the digital world, if you are going to have notes, um, who can see those uh, from a document history standpoint? Everything is granular within OnBase, um, but do you want to allow people to see that history? Do you want to be, them to be able to see the workflow history or tasks? So typically we recommend that you start with an audit of your documents, your forms, consider how you store them, who you allow access, um, and then all of this is managed through OnBase user rights and permissions. Once we've kind of cut past the um, what can they see, the, uh, the next consideration is what can your staff do? You know, what permissions are you going to allow them? Can they create new content? Can they approve or reject? Um, are they able to rename keywords within OnBase? Um, what updates or revision control are you going to place on that content? Are they able to delete? Once that content is in OnBase, are they able to... Uh, to send that externally? Can they export it? Can they print it? Can they email it back to notes again? Can they add notes? Can they modify notes? So again, these things are all managed through on-base user rights and permissions as well. And then finally, you know, there's the important need to manage the reporting of this security. Um, there really truly is a huge value in that audit trail, as Matt had mentioned earlier. On-base documents, every action taken on those document, documents to hold you know, staff, you know, not just within HR, but managers and employees accountable, and it does prepare you for that audit. Now, again, you know, the combination of ways to do that, uh, document history, workflow history, there's on-base reports, Matt mentioned exception reports for missing documents, which is, uh, uh, again, very, very critical to managing security and, uh, and confidentiality. And then finally, on our, on our number five, what keeps HR up at night, is policies and procedures. This is a pretty common item um, that we get asked about when we're dealing with HR as well, just due to the vast amount of policies and procedures that need to be not only distributed, but you know, created, revised, managed, as well as, as, well as shared. So typically within, um, within the HR department, if you're not using an automated solution like OnBase, everything is manual. Uh, policies are distributed manually, pre-distribution, so the creation, the editing is often very clumsy. It's either manual or it's pushed around through emails. Signed policies by employees um, are, 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 are manual as well, kept in folders in HR, so if an employee wants to see that, they have to come back to HR. And manual tracking and signing and follow-ups is, is, is burdensome. So with OnBase, um, policy and procedure solutions really can be broken into two parts. There's the pre-distribution um, side of it, so kind of working from left to right in a clockwise motion. The pre-distribution, that's, that's that creation, the review, the approvals of those policies. And then we move on to the distribution, which is really the employee viewing and acknowledgement of those policies and procedures. So again, moving from left clockwise, the pre-distribution stage is where we see companies typically leveraging on base to manage the review, the approval processes. Um, additional tools that come into play here often are EDM services. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that, that provides revision and version control of those documents in OnBase. Um, Additionally, OnBase integration for Word, um, which is included in the OnBase Office business application, the OBA, OBA capabilities, that can also be valuable by keeping users in Word to manage uh, the documents, especially 
during that creation and revising of the policies. So once the policy is approved, HR can then move to that distribution phase. So to distribute to those who need to acknowledge it and distribute either to the entire company or to a group at a time. So this is typically done through document knowledge transfer and on-base capability um, often referred to as DKT, document knowledge transfer. So depending on the specific needs, you know, workflow and e-forms, you know, could be a way around that, but truly DKT was designed for exactly what we're talking about here. I'll show you um, a couple of slides for DKT in a minute, but essentially DKT will initiate an email notification to each assigned employee. And then once they receive that notification, he or she will then access OnBase, read the policy, acknowledge that it's been read, and then the acknowledgement is stored in OnBase. So by storing that policy centrally in OnBase, the employee maintains a reading group, essentially a library for future reference, and HR can manage and report on those acknowledgements as well. An additional benefit of DKT is that at the end of that process, at the end of the, uh, the employee acknowledgement, we can test their comprehension. So as I mentioned, here's an example of uh, OnBase DKT screens. On the left side, you will see the status of uh, what the employee would see, the status of those policies that are either pending, acknowledged, not viewed, overdue, etc. And by clicking on one, in this case, the employee handbook, um, they would actually see that policy open up and then they would be provided the employee acknowledgement task. So looking above, acknowledge, reject, you know, add to reference, etc. cetera. Um, truly, as simple as that. Additionally, we can add in um, the option to acknowledge with a password protected authentication so that uh, we don't have fear of someone else approving policies for another, for another employee. At the end of that acknowledgement, as I mentioned earlier, we can actually test reading comprehension through a series of questions. And that test can be as long or short as you want. And it can be you know, all sorts of different formats of questions. It can be multiple choice, true, false, multiple select, essay, where we're actually keeping track and modifying, or uh, keeping track and monitoring that, uh, that uh, reporting compliance. Because audit and compliance is so essential to the HR department, there's a number of reporting options available. So on the top half, you'll see scoring reports. Um, that's a direct function of DKT, as well as acknowledgement and delinquency reports, um, letting you know quickly who, you know, what the status of those employee reviews are. So getting started. How do you get started and, and kind of move um, to doing something based on things that Matt and I have, have reviewed today? So the good news is we have assisted customers with literally all of this and more. Uh, this is a quick summary of everything from managing you know, the actual employee files, resume handling, creating a database of searchable resumes, um, automating the, the onboarding process, so sending out welcome packages to the individual departments, letting them you know, the departments know, facilities know, I need office space, ID badges, letting IT know, I need to set up security and, and phones and, and laptops, um, electronic forms processing, so actually day-to-day -day managing of, of employee interactions, you know, tie things like time off requests, self-service, uh, employee benefit changes, reviews, disciplinary termination processes, uh, very, very common. Uh, enrollment benefit tracking, and as we just talked about, reading compliance, policies and procedures, and then, uh, and then the testing. So the good news is, as I mentioned, we've assisted customers with all of these. The bad news is, as exciting as this is, it can be extremely overwhelming. So what we've found, what works best for most, is really start with the basics and expand over time. In fact, most organizations start by keeping it simple, you know, and that's really focusing on digitizing those employee files, essentially creating an electronic filing cabinet. So looking at what are those documents and forms, what uh, content do I have in filing cabinets, boxes, uh, in baskets, in trays, emails, fax servers, really saying here is an audit of that content and then creating that electronic filing cabinet log logistically logically in OnBase to store, maintain that security, compliance, um, confidentiality, identify what the access is for different user groups. So what can the employee see? What can their manager or supervisor see? What can HR generalists see versus HR management, which might be a different view based on executive compensation type of documents, and then applying a, uh, a document retention. So that's really you know, I would say the basics that, um, that we see most starting off with, I'll say, to keep it simple. And it's really, again, focusing on that, 
that day forward capture storage retrieval of that content to enhance the user access, strengthen your compliance, automate the retention, ensure security of that content. One of the, the next natural questions we normally get is what about all that paper? What about all that content that is in file cabinets, in, in boxes? Um, that's something we can definitely work you know, with you on. It, it, it really depends. It depends on the, the amount of content you have, the ability of your in-house resources. I mean, we have seen companies that have insourced this um, either within the HR team or brought in some temp employees, some interns, or fully outsourced. Um, so if you're going to outsource, you can definitely work with a partner who can assist you, um, Navient can, to offer these type of services. You know, someone who can be flexible, someone who has done it before, um, and then even if you're going to outsource it, you can look at fully outsourced or partially outsourced. We've worked with organizations that have said, you know, we'll do the prep internally, and can you help us with the scanning and indexing, you know, from a partnership standpoint. Once that content, for those of you that are not familiar with um, HR in OnBase or haven't used it before, um, put a couple of quick screens in here to kind of share, you know, once I have that content in OnBase, either day four, back file, or both, you know, how do I access that? So search with an OnBase community managed in a number of ways. This screen is actually showing the standard OnBase Unity search. So, you know, looking at the left-hand side of the page, just above the orange arrow, you know, I have my document type group, human resources, my document types. In this case, I'm looking for a resume, and I'm looking specifically for Jane Harper's resume. It's as simple as typing your name in, hitting find on the bottom of that pane at the bottom, and Jane Harper's resume would immediately uh, would immediately sh show as a response item for me. Additionally, OnBase has something called folders. So OnBase doesn't store content in folders. OnBase is a dynamic database. However, we can replicate in a virtual world um, that look and feel of folders. So for example, in, if, you're, if your manual paper files are stored in, let's say, three folders, application information, employment documents, and performance reviews, we can replicate that in OnBase, essentially creating a template for those document types that should be in um, in that folder. Additionally, as you see on the right-hand side, we can replicate those as tabs, so virtual tabs, and we can color code those. So as you navigate, it might be easier one or the other to, to move through those folders. But again, we create that template to say, here are those documents that should be in that folder, as well as are there any documents that are missing from that folder to quickly identify what is not there. For those of you familiar with or have heard of OnBase Application Enabler, this is another very common way for OnBase to link up with your existing HRIS system. This is an example of a Microsoft Dynamics GP screen where you're in that employee transaction or employee profile. On the bottom right corner, this is actually a floating tile. It wouldn't interfere with any information you have, but it's basically showing you that there are documents related to this employee, and there are three missing documents, as we just saw from the last screen in their file, by clicking on that icon, it would bring me right to that same foldering approach. So the value here is not leaving my native application, and I can access all that content directly from my HRS application. And then finally, the last one I wanted to show you here was OnBase integration. A uh, very, very valuable tool, not just for um, ingesting content and capturing content without having to print it and rescan it, but custom queries, document retrieval, the ability to upload, engage in a workflow, um, is all available directly from that Outlook client, including electronic forms. So if you are going to extend, you know, kind of that phase two, electronic forms, employee self-service benefit changes, your your day-to-day -day employees who may not be familiar with OnBase or you definitely don't want them going to your HRIS system, we can extend all of those OnBase forms for them to initiate those forms directly from Outlook, submit, and get pushed through OnBase workflow to the HR department. Matt? Excellent. Thanks, Ed. We're going to wrap it up here and uh, give you guys a couple of ideas or a couple takeaways here um, from the content that we just talked about or the five best practices. And really the first and, and kind of just kind of to start here is where do we go? You know, how do we start this process? And, and first and foremost, we've got, to, we've got to take an inventory. So we've got to make a list in some facet. We've had customers whiteboard this. We've had customers uh, put an Excel spreadsheet together. We've assisted uh, customers in, in documenting this information. But really, what is each piece of content or each document in there? And then ultimately, what keywords should be associated with these documents from an indexing standpoint? Um, who should have the ac access? How, how granular in the security basis should we have? 
um, or should we set up the, or configure the system to be able to do that? And then ultimately, is there anything special about the document that would need to be need to be thought of before we actually um, you know configure and implement this solution? So at, once we've got all these documents and kind of and kind of the inventory taken, then we need to, to uh, uh, surround ourselves or, or immerse ourselves in what are the processes that exist actually with each one of these documents. So the approvals, the exceptions, timing, uh, related documents, uh, supporting documents that are tied into this. How does all of that piece of the pie work together and in a more efficient manner than what we might be doing today? Um, quick wins, obviously highest volume. You know, we've seen a lot of um, employee review process, kind of redesigned work that we've looked at recently, and a lot of new higher packet uh, digitalizing that, creating workflow. Um, those, have, those have been two of the biggest wins that we've seen, but it varies per, per, per organization. So largest time investment, biggest pain, those types of things really kind of step up to the forefront in there. And then future state improvement. What are some ideas? Will that work within your organization uh, for improving these processes that exist? So those are the two those are two things to be looking at and then ultimately you know the people that are involved in that process how do we get um how do we have the uh you know who's responsible for getting this information in as far as, as scanning that information indexing approving it uh retrieving and then ultimately reporting can we as part of this process um shift some of that work on to some of the users the day-to-day -day users can we shift the scanning component onto them can we can we move around some of that work to make not only our hr department more efficient but allow us to do more work and be able to grow with uh you know an increased revenue size increased employee count can we do more with less um, by the advent of this technology so uh, that's it in a nutshell. Um, Ed and I uh, will be around. If you've got questions, we'll pull that up. I know we're running into, uh, we're bumping into our half hour here. Uh, if you guys have questions, definitely reach out to us if you think of things here in the process. Otherwise, ultimately, you can go to Navient.com, um, our, our new branding, our new website uh, from a human resources standpoint. There's a wealth of information inside of that also. And uh, we'll look for questions here quickly. I don't think we have any so far. So well, thank you for your time. Again, from Ed and, Ed and myself, we appreciate it and hope you have a great day.